taking that off onto the top of what we believe to be the sort of archaeological horizon um, and what it's showing is although the silt above it is quite wet when you peel that off the underlying sediment is cracked and really dry so what we believe to be happening here is there's, a, there's a, almost a double water table so there's the real water table and then this silt layer overlying the peats is holding a little bit of water but that's not penetrating below it so what, what my concern is is that the wood we are going to find in here is probably going to be really really fragile and badly preserved excited because we've got Ian Panter here with us who is the um, head of conservation for the York Archaeological Trust otherwise known as Mr. Wet Wood and um, he's here to <laughs> he's here to have a look at what we've got on site and he'll be coming back next week to do a little bit of sampling so Ian yes how do you feel about being here I'm great and um, I'm just getting used to being called Mr. Wet Wood it's <laughs> looking very very um, intriguing actually the trench we're standing in at the moment is, is effectively dry and there's very decayed timber but when you move about 50 yards towards the preservation hall then there's there's still good preservation mm. so mm. there's the, I think preservation is is, is still good but uh, but we'll have to have a look either way lot, lots of learning there is there yeah. is lots of important information from from this excavation yes excellent the reason why I brought you here today is because once you're wandering around sides and you're looking at all the trenches up close and you see all the hedges and you've got all the archaeology right in your face it's really hard to grasp how that site fits into the wider landscape and over there would have been where our trench one is right now that would have been the, the start of our post alignment that headed out from the shoreline here on Northy Island all the way across the fen west to, to reach the edge of Peterborough which would have been the mainland and that, that low ground that you see right now between these two gentle rises would have been underwater during the Bronze Age and it was because of this that this, this causeway linked the two land masses as they started to disappear under the rising and receding waters until eventually they were completely inundated with water. Phenomena! 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 Day 12, um, we've just got over the halfway point through the dig and um, we're here at Trench 1. So we originally positioned this trench in order to target the archaeology that's extended on from the excavations that we did in 1999 and, and in 2003. It was vital that we actually located the presence of the post holes and the continuum of the ditch towards the fen edge. And uh, the last week and a half we've done a fantastic job, the guys have done a fantastic job here of excavating through the layers, revealing archaeology at various stages um, and getting through those, those, those features. And just to give you a sort of an update as to what's going on at Trench 1 now, we've got the continued presence of the, of the post alignment and an earlier ditch as well. But what's quite exciting is that the earlier ditch that predates the post alignment seems to have followed an earlier phase of fencing. We've actually got post holes underneath that ditch which is then cut by the post alignment. All is pretty much expected here apart from that. It's all going well. We're currently cleaning back uh, the upper surface to expose more archaeology um, and we're on schedule for the finish. I've, got, I've had a secret for about a week, a week and a half and um, in my head when we trailed back for the first time I thought that there might be a possible roundhouse here and I kind of whispered it to Matt and he just went I think that there is. But now we've tried it back and oh. it does actually look like there possibly potentially might be a roundhouse here. Kind of see where these guys are recording. We scored in these lines and we're wondering whether that's a terminus ditch gully. There's another one there. And there's an entranceway in there. We've got lots of post holes, lots of stake holes. There's debitage from flint flakes and there is a mysterious dark patch on that side as well, which could potentially be the half or the centre of the roundhouse. And we've measured it and it's about eight metres in diameter. I'm convinced. What about you? Still not convinced at the moment. Eight metres is on the small side for Bronze Age roundhouse. Um, and until we dig it, I don't think I'll be convinced. Yeah, but mate, you think what? that your digging bag 
it's not a toiletries bag, but we all know that it is a toiletries bag. But it bag. is a digging bag. You know that it's a toiletries bag, don't you? No, it's not that, it's a digging bag. You know it's a toiletries bag. It's a digging bag. It's a toilet bag. It's a digging bag, damn it. It's a toilet bag. But this one says, look, it says on it, it's a digging bag. Um, I think that you wrote that. that this morning. No, I didn't. That's how it came. Digging bag. It's a toiletries bag. Digging. Round house, not round house. Digging bag, toiletries bag. Yeah, that's different. It's like chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. That's completely different. Well, here we are at the end, well coming towards the end of week two, I guess archaeology, a lot like football, is a game of two halves. So we're just about to head into our second half and it's looking pretty good. We've had some good visits this week from various specialists, we've just had Ian Panter from York Archaeological Trust, who's uh, directing us on uh, the condition analysis of the waterlogged wood. We're taking samples as we're going through. We've had visits from uh, Cambridge County Council. We had a visit from Charlie French today from Cambridge University, one of the original excavators who did the original auger survey as well. That was really good. And we're cracking on. We're looking for some reinforcements coming in. Our weekend venturers are about to descend and swell our ranks. And this weekend, We've got Francis Pryor coming to talk to everyone. We've got John Gator from Time Team, who's going to be doing a geophysics masterclass. And then we've got a, a pub quiz again in the Iron Age Roundhouse. So it's all looking pretty good. So next week, we're going to continue with the same strategy. We're going to keep on going down. And we're going to really get a handle on what's going on with our platform. Is it a platform? Is it a bit more complex? Does our August survey actually work? Are we going to get any fines out of our ditch? Are we going to be able to put a date on our paleo land surface? So will we find all these things out? Well, I'll tell you later. Right now, I've got to go and get some milk.